In my previous video on the ESP32, we looked at how to show charts in a web browser so that you could couple that to actual sensors. But in that video, we used artificial data, as you can see over here. Obviously, this is not a real temperature sensor. Temperature won't change really that quickly. So I had the request to really show how to use an actual sensor uh, to show real values. And that's what we're going to do today. So I've got this uh, DHT22, I think it is, temperature humidity sensor. And the goal of the video is to show real live data of that sensor in the web browser. As a starting point, I just have some, a simple script to read out the sensor. I'm not sure what sensor you're going to use, but on most sensors, there's a lot of examples available online. So just um, use those to get the sensor itself up and running. So I'll briefly program this, and then we just look at the results that it gives in the serial interface. So the results are over here. It reports the temperature and it reports the humidity. So then instead of the console, we want to send this information over to the web client so that it can be shown in this live chart and be updated there. So let's briefly um, get ourselves that code and then update it with this information. On my GitHub repository, just go to the repositories and open up uh, ESP32 Wi-Fi part 4. That's the code that we'll be basing uh, on today. So we just go to code and download zip. And let's open that up. So here we are. Um, and uh, we'll now uh, open esp32 webserverplots.ino. And the first step will be to basically copy paste the sensor specific things over into the esp32 webserverplot code um, so that the two can be combined. So we'll go ahead and just select all this and copy paste it in here. Oh, of course, we need to add some stuff from the setup as well. So now the sensor is available. Uh, then from the main code, basically what we need is the section where we read out the actual temperature. So uh, that is done over here. And we copy paste that here to the main loop uh, where instead of now sending a random value, we want to send the actual temperature. So what we want to do first is just read out the actual temperature. So that's done over there. Now we want to send over that temperature to the, um, the client, the web client. And, and as we saw before, the temperature is a float value. It's like 18.9 or something like that. And so in order to send that over, um, we need to now either convert it to an integer or send it over as a string. In this particular example, I think I'm working with integers. Let me just briefly see. Yeah, I generate a random number and send this over. So let's just convert it to an integer and send it over. So the easiest way for that is to uh, just multiply the number with 10 and then send it over as integer and divide it by 10 again um, when you receive it. Because basically what happens is, uh, let's say you have uh, 18.6 uh, uh, centigrade, um, then you convert this to 186. Um, you receive it on the other end, and there you convert it back to 18.6. So it's easy as that. And so the only thing we need to do is here go to the sensor value, and the new sensor value now is going to be... I'll make this a little larger. It's easier for you guys to see. So the new sensor value will be round 10 times... Uh, event dot temperature and then finally um, of course we only want to update the temperature if it's actually a valid uh, value 
so here in this uh, if loop, you see if there's actually a temperature available. Maybe the sensor is not working properly or so. And then if it is working properly, you read out the temperature. Uh, so in this section, we want to now update and send it over as JSON. And then we terminate it over here. All right, that makes sense, right? So we read out the temperature if it's valid. Then uh, we just briefly write it to the console and also send it over to the uh, JavaScript client. That's all we really need to do here. But let's now look at what we need to do at the client side. As you know, when you followed my last video, uh, the JavaScript is all in data. And then we open up these files over here. Now, the first thing we can do is get rid of the slider that we had to change the random intensity. We won't be needing that anymore because we'll just be showing the actual temperature of the sensor. So this section can go. Now let's have a look at the actual JavaScript. Okay, now we briefly go through the JavaScript itself and of course we need to get rid of the uh, slider here as well. So this one over here can go and also that one over here. Slider intensity changed is also obsolete. And we now need to focus on the process command one uh, where we can get rid of the change in random intensity. And so we only have now graph update. So if we receive a new value, we want to show that on the chart. But um, remember, we now converted that um, float to an integer by multiplying it with 10. So we want to divide it by 10. This is a bit of a quick hack um, because now what we basically need to do is object of value is this complete array that we're sending over. So we'll need to divide the complete array by 10. Alternatively, you could store those values here within the browser and just only update the last value that we received. But in this code, we'll just need to work with what we've got. So let's call it graph values or something like that, or actually it's temperature, right? Uh, so temp values that equals then our object dot value. And we now need a quick for loop. And in this for loop, we just divide it by 10. So we'll just go temp values uh, at point i equals temp values at i divided by 10. We shouldn't forget to write the temp values now to the data set. And with that, it should be fine. Yeah, one last thing would be to actually change the range. So as you can see now, the temperatures from zero to 10 degrees are shown. That's a little chilly, I would say. Let's change that to, for instance, 14C up to 30C, or something along those lines. You can change that to your own liking. All right, let's upload this and see what it does. So please don't forget to go to tools and then update the SPIFF, the, the files, right, uh, that we have for the uh, client. So the sketch upload. And that doesn't work if you still have your serial port open. So let's close that and try again. All right, so we upload that. Then finally, we need to, of course, upload the code itself. And here we go we have our temperature sensor. So let's see if it's working. Let me see if I heat it up manually by putting my hand on the uh, sensor itself. Then the uh, temperature at some point in time should go up. Ah, oh, there you go. Becomes warmer. Okay, so that works just fine. Now to really finish it, we need to also add some labels on the axis, of course. Uh, that is done here um, for the y-axis uh, with 
uh, y axis over here, where we now can, um, before ticks, add a scale label and I just copy pasted that of the net. So now a label string on the y axis will be temperature and C at this point in time. Feel free to do Fahrenheit yourself. Now the x axis are still missing, so let's add those as well. They come right after the y axis. And I see that the indent is off here. And yeah, we didn't really convert now the x axis to time or something like that. So I'll just say measurement number. Uh, you can change that to your liking then yourself. All right, let's throw this in and look at the final result. Here are the final result, and we see we now have labels on the axis and uh, the temperature is continuously updating. Okay, so I hope this was useful for you. Uh, leave your comments down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and see you in the next video.